Is it possible to get perfect collimation for free? Today we're going to find out. This video comes as a response to a comment left in the comment section by Darren. Darren suggested using ASTAP as an aid in both back focus and collimation. Darren, thank you for the suggestion. I think this is going to be pretty cool to investigate. ASTAP or the Astrometric Stacking Program is used in many different applications including plate solving. I had recently set up ASTAP precisely for plate solving with Astrophotography Tool. And yet, ASTAP has a number of different tools which allow us to analyze images. So far, I've set up my scope and I've pointed it at my laptop. Here's my laptop with the fake Starfield simulation. And there's my telescope. I have also done some focusing using the focus aid. What I'm going to do next is take a baseline picture and use ASTAP to analyze it. So I've taken a picture of my baseline and I'm going to grab that picture, should be in my images. I'm going to pull it into ASTAP. It's not liking this image. I had to play a little bit with the gain settings and increase the exposure time of my photo in order for uh, ASTAP to pick up the fake star field as a star field. Now that ASTAP is detecting my stars, I can begin my collimation. I'm putting these on because I don't want to touch the lens. This takes out the secondary mirror. I'm going to put the secondary mirror in. Housing that it's in is actually moving. I don't like that. So I'm just going to turn it. There we go. I'm going to put this back on. That's more or less straight. Now let's move, let's change the orientation of this triangle so that it matches the screws. And now I can see that definitely down in this direction this is 9.58 10.3 so I need to I believe raise this up lower this now this corresponds to the inverted image <clears throat> so it's this corner here that corresponds with the biggest tilt Uh, try as I might, I'm still having trouble with this one corner. Now I wonder if it's because this uh, little support that holds the secondary mirror moves, right? I can actually, if I push hard, I can move it from side to side. Now I've positioned it where I think it should go, and I've tightened everything down as much as I could. Um, but that corner is still giving me problems. Nothing that I've done has been able to uh, get rid of the skew, the tilt to one side. Now, could this be sensor tilt or something else? <clears throat> 
Okay, first of all, uh, this black... <clears throat> this back plate is removable, as we saw before. This is where the secondary mirror comes off. And that is how you install a Sterizona Hyperstar. If you're converting your SCT into an F2 with a Sterizona Hyperstar, reducer and replacement for your camera. <clears throat> What I didn't expect is that there is actually a little bit of play when you uh, take off this ring. So there is play in the secondary mirror. And although it doesn't make a huge difference, it does make some difference. So when you tighten this ring, you have to make sure that you align the secondary mirror uh, more or less in the middle. You kind of have to push it up and in to the groove uh, so that when it locks in, it's not skewed to one side or the other. So again, that wasn't a huge difference, but it made a bit of a difference in my tilt. What made a much more significant difference, and I didn't uh, really think of this at first, was my T-adapter. The T-adapter has a lot of play. So when you unscrew this ring, uh, for example, if I use this T-adapter uh, to rotate my camera to adjust my field of view when I'm shooting various targets. And whenever you loose loosen this ring, this entire tube can shift position. And when it shifts, it creates a large amount of tilt. Significant amount of tilt. In fact, by playing with that, I was able to reduce my tilt almost down to nothing. So that, in conjunction with doing the collimation, using uh, this, so this is the uh, octagonal uh, pattern. Um, I mean, it, the triangle is, is okay, but it just did not give me uh, enough... Um, it did not cover enough area to be as useful. So I've been using the octagon. After much playing around, what we can see is that uh, the corners are very, very close. As a matter of fact, when we go into the corners here, we can see that the corners are pretty uniform as well so uh, this is the way I'm going to be collimating my telescope from now on this image inspection in ASTAP gives me a very precise view uh, into how my stars are being skewed and the reason I can use this so precisely is because I'm using pixels on a screen on a laptop so those are a fixed size, meaning the fixed size of those uh, pixels going through the telescope, hitting the camera, uh, results, or rather allows me to analyze the distortion across the field of view against something that I know is exactly uniform. And that then helps me to collimate the telescope. I would say this is probably the best collimation I've had. All right, so what's next? I'm going to hope for some clear skies uh, this week, and I will try reshooting NGC 884 and 869. It's uh, rather early in the evening in November, uh, but the sun is setting very early now after the uh, daylight savings time change. So it is dark enough to be able to do some master photography imaging. 
Uh, it is a couple of days after I did the collimation using ASTAP and I am testing my collimation once again against MGC884. And if things go well, then um, in a couple of hours, once I have some results, I'll probably point at something more interesting. Well, I guess it's par for the season, but not long after I set up my uh, imaging plan, the clouds started to roll in. Uh, that said, I did get about uh, 42 minutes worth of uh, useful images uh, after processing, and I did have an initial look at the results, and I couldn't be happier. I didn't think they were going to turn out that well. Uh, compared to the initial image that I took, before I started working on my back focus. Uh, the, the stars that were stretched in that uh, uh, circular fashion around the, the edge of the entire image, those are gone. And as I go down towards the bottom, this is really noticeable, right? Um, there's this uh, almost ring of stars that's much closer to the center of my field of view than I had anticipated. And compared to some of the stretching that I saw even after doing the back focus and the initial collimation, those are gone as well. So collimating the telescope uh, using ASTAP with uh, the field of fake stars uh, on the laptop and ASTAP to analyze the entire field, that worked out beautifully. I couldn't have uh, asked for anything more. So for the rest of this hazy night, I've set my scope to capture the Pleiades cluster. So uh, if the Pleiades turns out, I'll post it to the end of this video. If not, I'll just post the same NGC884 as a comparison to the previous two NGC884 images I've already processed uh, to show the difference between a non-back focus aligned image to a proper back focus to a proper back focus with collimation. Until next time, thanks for watching and clear skies.